Welcome to the Old Man of the Three with J.J. Reddick and Tommy Alter, presented by Cash App and brought to you by 342 Productions. This is episode 74, You've Got Mail, with Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese, what's up, buddy? What's up, what's up, man? I'm glad to be back. Hype for this, man. Yeah. We were just talking. First of all, you're, you're, you're back in Ames this week. Big college football game this weekend. And we were giving your buddy George some shit. If you're in Iowa and you're around on Friday night, George will be at the Fairway Meat Market <laughs> signing autographs. Yeah, I, I will not be in attendance, uh, but I, I hope he has a great time. I hope he has an amazing time. Man. That's the most George thing I've ever heard, though. It's great. Tommy, why don't you explain a little bit about, to our listeners and viewers about what we're going to be doing with Tyrese over the next few months? Yeah, so JJ and I did uh, a mailbag maybe a month or so back, three weeks to a month or so back, and it, it did really well. JJ called me afterwards and was like, oh my God, all these people keep calling me saying how, how great my answers were and they want to play golf with me. And he was like so excited about how it wins. I was like, okay, I guess maybe <laughs> we, should, we should probably do that again. And so I thought about it for a second and I was like, well, there's only so much we can tell the same fucking boring stories about wine and Hamptons golfing before everybody tunes out. So let's get our correspondent Probably the most interesting person right now in the 342 universe who graciously, uh, whenever we call him, picks up the phone and, and wants to try stuff out. Like, let's add him to the equation. And so now, basically, when we do these mailbag segments, we're calling it You've Got Mail and Tyrese is going to be a part of them. And so we're, we're, our goal as of now is to do them a couple times a month, schedule dependent. Um, but we'll see. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of we'll kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. But Basically, anytime you have any question for Tyrese now, there is now a vehicle where he will be forced to answer. It. Essentially so. <laughs> forced to answer. Yes. Front and center. I love it. And Tyrese, just so we're clear, I did. I said none of those things after we did our mailbag episode. I did not call Tommy and say, people love my answers. That's, exactly, That's not what I said. Word for word. <laughs> that was an amazing intro, by the way. Oh, my God. Wow. What an intro. He said, I was, he called me the most interesting man in the three, four, two euros. That's, it's an honor. That's an honor. <laughs> I think that's true. It's you and Sue. You and Sue are at like your Sue's probably above you. You're one well, for A. Sure, she should. Yeah, of course. Sue's one. You're one A, and then there's like a pretty steep drop off after that. <laughs> I would agree with that. All right, let's roll into some of these questions, Tommy. All right, I like this first question. So one interesting thing: we got a bunch of international questions, which I'm very happy about. Clearly, the people are listening to the show in different parts of the world. Uh, Clara from Slovenia wrote in. Um, do NBA players ever feel small or insecure next to bigger players? Mm. Physically mm. small or insecure? <laughs> Jay-Z, I think I should let you answer that that, that one first. <laughs> I'm, trying to think of, I'm trying to think about That's an interesting question, actually. Yeah. Um, um, I would say I, I would say not insecure. I would say not insecure. There's definitely times on a basketball court. Where I'm like, man, I didn't, I didn't realize how short this guy was, or I didn't realize just how tall this person was. But I, it doesn't give me a sense of insecurity. Although I will say this, I, I think you know we're all insecure in our own ways. And over the weekend, I was at the beach and I took a picture with my buddy right after I'd gotten out of the ocean, and I put it on the gram. And because uh, it was just like a beautiful picture of like the beach in the background, the sun was setting. It was just a, it was just a moment, you know. It was a vibe, <laughs> and I had my shirt off, and I captioned it "Dad bods," you know, "Dad bods" or whatever. And like, I haven't worked out in a while, and like, I'm feeling a little insecure about my body right now. So I'll admit that. Is this a six pack picture? It's it's not really a. <laughs> this six is pack. what he it's, does, Tyrese. <laughs> it's I'm more. It's insecure. more. I need to find it now. I need to it's find not it a six now. pack picture. It's like more like a skinny fat eight pack. It's, not it's skinny a skinny fat, fat at eight all, pack. dude. What are you, <laughs> Tyrese? Have you? Do you have any? This is this is already taking a weird pivot. Have you put any shirtless photos up on your Instagram? Uh, I think I recently did. Yeah, uh, working out in Vegas uh, at Impact. Yeah, I think I think I did. I think I, a, I think there was a picture of my shirt on. Maybe that's an NBA. So. That's an NBA IG special. Yeah, I feel like no ben, doubt. Ben has one of those every two weeks, especially in the summer. Yeah, you got to let people know you're working out, or in my case, you got to let people know you're not working out. You right. Know? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, to answer her question, I wouldn't call. I wouldn't say insecurity necessarily, uh, but coming into NBA as a, a guy known with like a smaller frame, 
like getting up like up close to these dudes and being like, damn, yeah, he he's he's strong. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that's the most underestimated thing is the size of the league. And uh, but I, I wouldn't call it insecurity. To me, that's just like, oh, okay, like I need to lift more, but I don't think it's necessarily like me feeling insecure about myself. I've I've told this story before, but there was a moment in the 2015 first round against the Spurs. Kawhi was guarding me a bunch that series, and it was like a it was like a dead ball or a free throw. And we had had an exchange in the previous play, and I kind of just like walked over to him, and I can't remember what I said, but I just kind of like tapped him on on his stomach, and I remember thinking to myself, I just touched a robot. Like this motherfucker <laughs> is built. He's built. He's solid. Oh man. It's funny that you say that. Cause he might've been my intro to like, you know, like welcome to NBA. He was like my welcome to NBA strength. Like he was like, we played the Clippers in LA and, and, you know, at this point I'm getting like, you know, guys off the bench are guarding me. Like guys, like, you know, I'm not that high up on the, on the scout report. And Kawhi's like, yo, I got him. I'm like, what, what's going on? Okay. And, and so I come to get a dribble handoff and his hand is on my hip. And I'm at the three point line, I think. And then I get the handoff. I look down. I'm at the logo. I'm like, I don't even know how I got out here. But I think he pushed me. I, yeah, he is crazy how strong these guys are. Just a nudge. Just a that nudge. That is hilarious. Speaking of uh, bodies, dad bods from Marissa. She didn't write where she's from. What's your guilty pleasure food? Mm. Tyree, start us off here. I'd probably say uh, my favorite dessert is like, uh, I don't know what you guys call it, but in Wisconsin, we call it dirt cake, like with the pudding, like Oreo pudding with like the gummy worms in it. We don't call it that. Yeah. That's a Wisconsin thing. I think it's called like Oreo pudding in most places, but by far, that's like my go-to dessert. Like I got to keep that in the house. What's in it? It's like Oreos, chocolate pudding, uh, uh, gummy worms. Whipped cream, yeah. little whipped cream, a little whipped cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whipped cream. No, it's, it's a great dessert. You try it, try it, Tommy. You know, it'll it change your life. Uh, I think my wife makes something similar to that without the gummy worms. It's trashy something. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called. My my guilty pleasure is donuts for sure. Donuts all day. Like, it's the one thing that I not. I don't have like a sweet tooth, but Sunday mornings I usually take my kids to get donuts, and that's and I, it's always like the most glut- gluttonous version. It's not like a chocolate <laughs> cake donut. It's it's like a churro donut with like a cream pudding filling. Like I, I want all of it. Shout out to Sidecar. Yeah, shout out to Sidecar. Spot. Terry, so there's a place in LA called Sidecar Donuts. I think we've said this in the show before. One time, JJ used to go there when he played for the Clippers all the time, like every week. And he was in Philly and I was in LA and I went there. I was coming to New York the following day. I went there on like a Saturday or whatever. And he got pissed because I was there and he wasn't and he wasn't. And so I felt bad. So I brought him donuts like in coach on the plane across the country. <laughs> and I put the box up <laughs> in the thing or whatever. And like half of them were smashed, but the other half were like fine. And they were like kind of stale. I bring it to his lobby. He just houses it in the lobby. He doesn't even he doesn't even wait. He's like, nope, sidecar is here. Like, that's it. They were they were kind of stale. They yeah, were kind of stale. Tommy, do you have a guilty pleasure? Food? Yeah, it's the um, like molten chocolate lava cake. Why is it always a sweet tooth? Why is it always a sweet tooth? It's the best. You know? It's the uh, best. They have that on a menu. I'm ordering it. I don't care where I am. All right. Uh, here's another food one just to stay on this topic. If you guys could only use one utensil for the rest of your life, who would it be? <laughs> what would it be? From Patrick in Philly. And then he has two other follow-ups, but let's answer that first. Ooh. A fork. Uh, uh, well, I really a spork, but we'll just go with a fork for now because I feel like. Are we allowed I, to pick sporks? No, that's a that's a that's a hybrid. It's got to yeah, be one. Yeah. <laughs> We're only allowed I, to pick a knife, a spoon, or a, a fork. A knife is a really weird answer to this question. <laughs> a, a fork, a fork for sure. I think you can use it as all three. I think you can use it as all three because you can't use a spoon as a knife. You have no chance. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick spoon. Because I think I think it's actually more versatile than a fork for certain items like cereal, soup, ice cream. Nobody wants to eat ice cream with cereal a with a, a good fork. Point. Yeah. And then I would say like as like a secondary utensil, you know, you don't obviously have the sharpness that you get with a fork or a knife. 
you just use your hands and then you scoop. So I'm going spoon. I, I'm going spoon. The only argument for knife when you really think about it is if you're eating something like steak, something you have to cut, you can't cut with anything else. And so technically, if you only have a knife, you can cut the steak with the knife and then stab it each time and eat that way. If you really think about it that way. That was, that's one of the weirdest questions that we've had on this podcast, I think. How you can eat a steak with a spoon, though? You can't. I, I tear it into pieces with my hands, and then I scoop up the pieces with a, with a spoon. That's fair. That's fair. I would just stab it with my fork and hold it like <laughs> an ice cream cone or something, you know, and just eat off it that way. He also writes, JJ, what's your favorite Philly cheesesteak spot in Philly? Okay. I don't know if we've ever answered that. Okay. Yeah. De Los Andros. De Los Andros, I think it's called. Yeah. Have you ever had a Philly cheese, Terry's? Uh, uh, yeah, but not like, not, I think only once in Philadelphia. What's like the, there's like a legendary one in Philadelphia I went when I played an AU tournament there, but I don't really Pats remember. Pats or Geno's? Geno's. Geno's sounds Gino's really. Like a big one. Yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah, like, yeah, it sounds like they're I had, I've had Pats, Geno's, Jim's, John's, Ishka Bibbles, Ishka Bibble 2's, and Delisandro's, and I'm going to say Delisandro's is the best. He also says, Tyrese, uh, why'd you pick the number zero? So D'Angelo Russell was like one of my favorite players in high school or like, yeah, I was like early high school. And so I wanted to wear zero in high school, but we had like an old coach that, you know, uh, shout out to coach Shady. He just didn't believe in like, no, there's no number zero. There's no number one. There's no headbands. There's no arm sleeves, all that jazz. So when I got to college, I was like, all right, I want to wear zero, but I was the second person to commit to Iowa state. So the recruit before me, Zion Griffin had already picked zero. So when I got to NBA, 22 was already taken by Rashawn. And I think 14 is retired by Oscar Robertson, if I'm correct, which is what I wore in high school. So uh, I just came to zero. It's, it's pretty badass. All right, next. Um, uh, from Stephen J in Tampa, which player under the age of 25 takes a jump this year that people are not expecting? You Tyrese, pick, you can't pick yourself. <laughs> I can't. I can't say myself. You can't say yourself. Uh, I, won't say, I won't say myself. That's I don't fair. know every. I don't know everybody's age in the NBA. I mean, under twenty five. That's a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes under twenty five. There's tripping? a lot of guys. There's. A, I feel like there's a lot of guys too that like have already taken a jump. There's so many good players under twenty five. <laughs> I'm just going to say De'Aaron Fox because I believe that he'll be an all-star this year. So, okay. I mean, he had a really good year last year, so I, I, I don't know how big the jump will be necessarily, but I think he'll be more in the public eye as an all-star. So I'll go with uh, Fox. Okay. All right. That's a good answer. Kind of a homer answer, but, you know. I was going to say Karras, but Karras is 27. My guy who's going to make a jump is John Morant. If we get if we get playoff John Morant or anything approaching playoff John Morant for an entire NBA season, that's a huge jump to me. That's 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 an all star. That's Memphis not being in the play in the playing game. Like there's yeah. a guy. That's the a other guy. I mean, his teammate could JJJ come back with a full season healthy. You know, he missed a ton of time with his injury. Like he's another guy that can make a jump. That's a good one. No, it's another good one is uh, Nikhil. Yeah, he's, Nikhil. he's under twenty five, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he's yeah, well under twenty five. That's a good one. I like. He'll that play one. a lot more, so he'll get a chance to do it. Um. Oh, this is another good basketball one from Jonathan. With the talk of uh, mid season cup, what do you think it would take for players to value a trophy like other than like the NBA championship trophy? Money. Fi yeah, financial gain. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what does money look like when you're already getting paid a lot? I, 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 yeah, exactly. It's got to be real money. I don't know what real money is to every player in the NBA, but I would say this: like, you have to understand with the way the game is played now, uh, and the the pace, uh, the amount of space you have to cover, the amount of space you have to guard in. Like, it's it's exhausting to play NBA games, and so if you're asking us, and it's it's you know, it's detrimental at times to our health. And so if you're asking us to play added games, hey, there better be a financial incentive to that. It just has to be. I'm sorry. There has to be. Because look, in all the other in all the other established sports that do this, let's just use European soccer, for instance. I don't know their complete financial model, but 
when you're signing a deal for PSG, like, you know, going in, like you're going to be playing in some extra games because you're playing for the top, uh, one of the top teams in Europe and you get paid because of that. And I don't know if they get paid on the side, like there's bonus incentives or whatever, but yeah, there's got to be a financial structure in, in place. Um, but the other part of this, about this whole thing is like, we live in rings culture, right? So like it, it like as a player, like if, if I win the mid season cup and the fans don't really care <laughs> and then that team then doesn't win a championship, like then you're just facing an entire off season of memes. That's just basically what it comes down to, you know? So like what, like what is, what is the, it's, it's a lose, lose. I don't know. I don't, I don't love the idea. I don't love the idea. And I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the idea, but I also did. I didn't like the plan idea either. Tyrese, when it was first brought up a few years ago. And I think the plan is awesome. So I like to play in. I like to play in. Uh, uh, I think there's, I think there's situations though. Like if you're the, I think if you're like the seven, you know what I mean? Or like the eight, like I, I if I was a seven or 18, I'd probably hate it. But you know, as a, as a team coming up, trying to get to that nine, 10 spot, I would, I love to play in, but uh, I think mid season, like the obviously financial gain is the biggest, the biggest thing. I think that would be like the only thing that can make it possible uh, unless they're out here guaranteeing playoff spots that might make, like young teams play harder and actually try to win it. That might be the only, the only way. Uh, but there, I think that I think then it becomes a dumb idea if you're just given playoff spots like that. So not a big fan. But if you're a guy on a max deal or super max deal, and you haven't won a championship yet, and you're making, like some of these guys will be in a couple of years, you're making fifty million dollars for the season plus all your endorsements. Like I don't know how that I don't know how the NBA would square like a financial incentive that would make sense to that player that he would be able to put his body at more risk if he hasn't already won a championship. Like if that's what he's ultimately chasing, I just I don't see. I, it. Yeah, I, I think that I see it being more. If it's a thing, I see it more as being a thing for like the younger teams. You know what I mean? Like teams that are coming up that you know probably an NBA championship is not really attainable. You know what I mean? But then what's the point? You know what I mean? Cause can teams decline? Like if I'm the Lakers and you're like, you're going to be in the mid season, cup, I don't play in the mid season cup. Like we got to take care of our bodies trying to win a, like a championship, same with Brooklyn and Milwaukee. So it would have to be something for like young teams. I don't know. The consolation cup, the consolation, <laughs> the knockoff Larry O'Brien tournament. Yeah. It could be like the NIT. It could be like a mid season NIT or something. Didn't they do a, a second bubble? Like for the teams that didn't make the playoffs? No, they tried to. And people just didn't go. They tried to. Yeah, that didn't happen. Feels like that. That didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. A little forced. Um, Tyrese, this is for you. I like this question. What's your favorite TV show that came out when you were a kid that you have watched when you got older? So it can't be like a kid show. That came out as, oh. Uh, like you were too young to watch at the time. I hate to say it, but Grey's Anatomy. I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've watched... Uh, you know, during quarantine, I watched. I already watched some, uh, but I'm I'm fully caught up. I'm in live action, so you're fully I mean, caught. Isn't it like 25 seasons? Yeah, I'm I'm fully there. <laughs> it's I, I just, 25 seasons. It is, it's, dude. It's a hey, lot. It's like it's almost 20. I think it might be over 20, but like like Meredith had COVID. Like it's 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 real. Like ah, uh, that's the it's the show for real. Like that's I'm, that's what I'm fully caught up on. I probably shouldn't be admitting that, but it's definitely Grey's Anatomy. I, I was not allowed to watch Friends when it was out. <clears throat> I think it came out when I was about twelve, and I I so I I was not like a fan of the show. Obviously, I knew every who, all the characters in the show or whatever, just because they're 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 so famous in pop culture. But I watched uh, Ben Winston's Friends uh, reunion show that was on HBO Max, and it inspired me to to start watching Friends. So that's what I've been doing lately. I've gotten through like a season and a half. It's it's an interesting show. Why were you not allowed to watch Friends? Friends is not is not like controversial show. It's not. Is it? I've never seen it. I was I didn't wasn't allowed to watch a lot of things, Tommy, growing up. Okay. <laughs> is it contra- like what isn't it just them sitting around talking about their relationships and stuff? I don't, I don't really watch it. We had to beg my parents to let us watch uh Say by the Bell. Like back them, <laughs> like I feel like Saved by the Bell is not controversial in any way, but just yeah. That's just, funny. You guys ever watch? You guys ever watch Oz? No. 
I've never no. seen it. Do you like dark? Oh, maybe it's very different than Grey's Anatomy. You know what it's about? <laughs> what is it about? It's about a prison. It's not, it was HBO's first like serious show. It's basically about a prison and each episode starts with like how the person got to jail and it's always, they're always like murders. Like it's not like they get to jail on some like bank fraud or anything. And it's like the most, it's like the most, I've never seen any show like it where they show this stuff on TV, but it's really good. It might be a good like change of pace. Are you like, suggesting that to Tyrese? Or you're yeah, saying I that's think it's a good show. palate cleanser for Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, that's like, once just, <laughs> Tyrese, by the way, you know that, you know that um, Tommy never answers, I know, probably notices, but he never answers any questions, even when I ask him directly the question. And our listeners have caught on to that. And he went on, uh, he went on the long shot pod with Duncan the other day as the featured guest. So I listened in for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes on YouTube. And I will say it was 30 or 35 minutes of Tommy deflecting questions. This is what he does. He's How a did professional I not deflector. Answer questions? <laughs> he, does, he, does, he does answer a lot of questions with questions. That is a fair. What are you talking about? I'm the <laughs> one asking the questions. You're welcome to turn them back onto me. I think it's weird if I ask a question and immediately answer it right away. That's like very self centered. Tommy, where are you right now? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, thank Have you. Have you ever heard of it? Have no, that's all you have to say. That's just like, <laughs> just answer a question with Terry an answer. Says, do you know if JJ's ever been to Brooklyn before? <laughs> I'm here right now, buddy. I'm um, here right now. <laughs> all right. Actually, I love this question. I can't answer this one because I'm you only you only you two can answer this. From Lily in LA. On a scale of one to ten, how much do players care about their two K ranking? I can speak for myself. I would say zero in my career. Fucking zero. <laughs> zero. Oh, you know why? Because it has like, zero. Like nine it has no, <laughs> listen, it has zero bearing on my life. At Like zero bearing. Like I, I'm already in the game. So I'm already getting a licensing check. Right? It doesn't matter. Nothing that happens in the game will affect me in real life. Zero Not really? a thing. So zero. So wait, can I interrupt before Terry's before you answer this question? So if like this, like Clippers, Philly, JJ scoring twenty points a game, whatever, shooting forty percent for three. If you if you logged onto two K and they had your three point shooting in like eighty one or something, you wouldn't be like, what the fuck? Yeah, come on, you'd be mad. Stop. I'd be like, huh? That's that's about it, huh? That's weird. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What do you think, Terry's? You have to I give mean, a number. I grew up playing 2K, so it has value to me. I still play it to this day. Uh, well, I think the product has kind of worsened as time has went on. I, I it's still, it, I don't, I don't know. My rookie year, going to my rookie year, it was like, I kind of, I always have low expectations, so I thought they're going to be like a slow 70s. And I was mid 70s, so I would say like a, I, I was like a three four in terms of invested, uh, and I think I'm still there. I think I'm an 82 to start this year, so. Uh, it's uh, it's the little things that matter to me. I grew up like creating players, like that's all I do. So like the fact that they don't have my my accessories updated, they got me in some generic Nikes. Like that bothers me more than like my attributes. I love just the casual humble brag of an eighty two. That's good. And it, what that was a, that's it's not a good a rank, eighty. It's a good ranking. It's a solid ranking, man. It's a solid ranking. If I pull up, a, should be higher. You should be 85 at least. No, but if I pull up 2K rank, rankings right now and and I look going from whoever the top is, I don't know who the top is, but whoever the top is all the way down to whoever's an 82, like there might be like one or two people that I would say, oh yeah, okay, Ty, Tyrese is probably, you know, should be a little higher than that person, but like 82, like there's, I know for a fact there's good players that are in the 70s on that yeah, game. Yeah, for sure, 100%. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah I agree. So what's your number out of one to ten? I said like a three four, like a okay. three four. Yeah. There's no fucking way JJ's a zero. That is a that is bullshit. Yeah, no, there's no way. Never... But he didn't, I mean, if he didn't grow up gaming, <laughs> if he didn't grow up gaming or, or doesn't play two K, then I understand because doesn't matter. He's in the game, and that's all that matters: his face, his tattoos, everything. He's good. I played Tommy. I played college basketball two K seven. It's the only two K game I really played. Yeah, what if, what if they got your tats wrong? Well, no, because I was on the cover of that game. That's why I played it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is all set up for that, Tyrese. This is yeah, a, well, that's how you set up a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he threw the self-love right there. He threw the self-love. 
All right. Uh, this, is so a, this is a good follow-up from Molly in Philadelphia, our favorite city. Um, how much press do uh, about themselves do players read? Like when they're in trade rumors, are they paying attention to like every little thing or they just zone out? Mm. It's a good question, actually. Because if you read someone's interview, let's say about free agency, they'll be like, oh, I'm not really worried about it right now. I'm going to wait till after the season, sit down with my agent, sit down with my family, talk about it then. But the reality is like, if you're a free agent, that's all you think about all season long. No one likes to deal with uncertainty. I know that for a fact because every guy that I've ever had as a teammate that's going to be a free agent has thought about his free agency. So he's worried about what's in the press about his free agency or if he wants to get traded or is you know in trade rumors he sees it he talks about it it it's out there i would say like for that sort of stuff like it's like 90 percent of guys pay attention to that with like day-to-day -day articles like I, I i don't think it's i don't think it's that high maybe like 40 to 50 percent of guys care about what's being written about them on a daily basis if it's just like normal nba sort of shop talk yeah, I think those I think those numbers are very accurate. Uh, you know, I think that uh, for me, like when I came in as a rookie, it was just kind of interesting, like all these different like outlets to to say say things. And uh, but now now it's more so not that not that big of a deal. I mean, I've you talk about trade rumors recently. I have, my name has been <laughs> some, some trade rumors, but uh, but no, nah, I'm not I'm not really paying attention because like you know you know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I've like, a good understanding at the end of the day i can't control nothing but basketball so i'm not i'm not too pay, I'm paying too much attention here actually i got a follow-up question to that so you're you're <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're coming off a, a great rookie season you were second in rookie of the year third 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 okay third i i had you second sorry man i had you second <laughs> <laughs> uh you're third in rookie of the year and you get to August of your first off season and your name's in trade rumors. Like mm -hmm. you got to be thinking after the season, oh, I'm, I'm good here. I'm going to be, I'm going to be here a while. What is your sort of first reaction when that happens? Uh, yeah, I just kind of, I, I kind of just laugh about it. I don't, I don't really think that's like realistic. I don't, see that happening uh I'm, and this is me speaking as obviously you know i could be just a naive 21 year old who went into my second year at the nba you know i don't think anybody's like untouchable by any means uh you know but i'm, I'm not i'm not i don't have time to like overreact or, or think su super deeply about it just like, i keep taking care of what i can and you know it sounds like a really media answer bs answer but uh you know <laughs> it's, it's it's the truth all i could do is go to the gym work out and and you know what what happens happens but obviously i love love sacramento love being there but it's, it's just funny because it happened so fast right like uh first i came in and it was like oh number 12 pick how good can he really be and now it's like oh well maybe he's worth sending for an all-star so on a, on a scale though of that first reaction on a scale is the scale on one end of the spectrum a chuckle like ha huh, nah it ain't happen or oh shit like where did, where does your first reaction rank on that scale? <laughs> uh, I would, I'd say a little bit above a chuckle, really. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm just like I'm in the gym. I'm with because uh, you know I, I, I'm like a basketball fan like everybody else. I got ESPN and Bleacher Report. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm at the gym. I just got done working on my teammates in LA. Uh, about to get some treatment. It's like, uh, uh, so they well, they want Halliburton. I'm like. I ain't hear nothing about this, you know. Uh, so, but, you know, what can you do? I love it. Don't you think? Don't you guys think a lot of this though is like just it's the most obvious sort of common sense thing for a lot of industries, not just basketball. Just don't believe everything you read. Like, there's a lot of there's there, there's just uh, there's not a ton of fact checking, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of conjecture gets printed across all media now where it's not like they need it's not like they need three sources in like the Kings organization to be like, oh yeah, like. We're shopping them. It's like some some random person could drop your name as a possible thing, and then all of a sudden it's like a rumor, and there's never any follow up. So no one's ever being like, like say a trade happens and you're not in it. No one's going to be like, well, those five people said for two weeks that it was going to be like this is what happens with free agency every year, where people just throw shit out and there's never any 
Not that there needs to be a part. I, th- well, I think that what happens is there's agents that leak things or that plant things with certain members of the media that they're friendly with um, in order to create some sort of leverage or momentum for something to happen. Um, front offices do the same thing. And then there's also like just bad, uh, I wouldn't even call them sources, but I would, I would say bad outlets that people are taking information from putting that on social media, on aggregate outlets, and then all of a sudden something becomes a thing that, that you know, isn't a thing. Like you, you can go, uh, you know, Joe Schmo can go write an article, the top five trade destinations for Ben Simmons. And if Clutch Points decides to pick one of those destinations up, then all of a sudden, I, I we've seen this happen. Like ESPN will be talking about something as a destination for Ben Simmons based on some guy who's not even informed of the situation tommy by the way we didn't talk about this but tyrese we we <clears throat> tommy and i on the last mailbag episode we did i started off by giving a free agency update which is basically i said i'm not going to be in training camp i'm going to spend the fall with my family and get healthy and if i you know if i play i'll, I'll play in january right it got picked up like here and there it wasn't like a big article because who, who, who fucking cares but it got picked up and then like like a week ago some guy for bleacher report writes that he was talking to a western conference exec and i'm I, here's my preferred landing destinations and the western conference exec is saying that he doesn't think i'll start the season with the team and he's using this guy as a source and i'm like what the fuck are y'all talking about <laughs> like i, just, I, I, I literally <laughs> I literally went on my podcast two weeks ago. You said exactly what it is. <laughs> but like, that's, what the, that's the game, though. That's the thing. Is like, it's like, just no disrespect if I mention anybody, if I mention any sports outlets or writers, please don't take disrespect to her if you do the shoe fits. But every team has like a tribune or like a random podcast. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, we're the uh, Chicago Bulls podcast and we get five viewers. And because we said that, uh, you know, so-and-so is unhappy, you know, we're going to tweet that. And if it gets picked up by one person, that's like per so-and-so. And I'm like, who is this? You click on it. He's got 300 followers. Like, well, I guarantee he does not know anything about this team. You know what I mean? They can't. Every team's got – there's like 100 outlets for every team, 100 podcasts of people who really don't know anything and they're just – like casual fans. I hate to use that word, but that's just the truth. Like yeah. everybody doesn't know what's going on. It's content to, it's not even really content. It's more just like clickbait masquerading as content. And there's a lot of that in our league. There's a lot yeah, of that sure. in our league. There's a lot of that. Now is the time to celebrate. The first NFL Sunday of the season is about to kick off and DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL is putting you in the center of this weekend's action. New customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize with their first deposit by signing up using code JJ. Get in on the action now. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at a $1 million payday. Download the DraftKings app now and use code JJ. This week, new customers can get a free shot at the $1 million top prize and compete for millions in prizes across all contests. Enter code JJ to get a free shot at the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code JJ, only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Tommy, I know we talk all the time about some of my gambling habits on the golf course, but I just want to let you know that I I had a big week last week. Oh, yeah? I had a big week. What happened? I won all three of my games, got paid out. I mean, I'm not betting heavy money here, not heavy action, but, you know, two, three hundred bucks here and there. Um, there's a member at Marion that I, I took $220 off. He said it was the most money he's ever lost on the golf course in his life. Did you find the three worst members of the club to get your mojo back? No, the guy's like a six handicap. Okay. I played well. He didn't play well. What are you going to say? Okay. Anyways, had to get paid. Guy didn't have any cash on him, and I told him to pay me in Cash App. Easy. What else can you do on Cash App? You can also buy crypto. Explore the crypto world. Yeah, it's a versatile app. So this is a this is a counter question, just by coincidence, to this. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, uh, from Tony in New York City, Tyrese, rank your five favorite personalities in the NBA. 
present company excluded. I think that means players, so not like media people. Like who just who five five players who have the best personality. Wow. Like like off the court, like we're talking like just in, like, like funny, yeah, just like funny, like someone who's like fun to hang with. Anthony Edwards, uh, mm -hmm. no question, he's top five, no no doubt about that. Um, Hassan Whiteside, <laughs> uh, probably one of the funniest dudes I've ever been around in in life. Uh, those two are definitely in there. I think Draymond is a a guy who is. As soon as he's retired, TNT's given offer in the bag or ESPN. He could he actually does a really good job. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I rock with Draymond. Uh, I think he does a really good job. Um, I feel like I'm missing obvious ones. I don't. I don't. I'm trying to think, Clay, Clay Thompson. I think he his stuff on, on social Clay, media. Is, the, Clay just finds himself in really funny photos. Yeah, and I've never talked to Clay. I've never had one conversation with him, but uh, I would probably say. He's up there, and uh, I, I would say Kawhi. You have to say Kawhi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to because, like, when I was watching the Drake music the other day, the last thing I expected was Kawhi to be in that there was dancing. Amazing. Uh, so I, I, I would definitely, I would, I would say those five. Those are just five off the top. I feel like Kawhi is fucking with all of us. You know, <laughs> like he when you're when you're like aware enough to be in on the joke, like it's just it's gold. It's yeah. cold. He's so he's so good. JJ, at that. you have to answer this question because you've played with so many. <clears throat> oh man! Current the though, you can't. Don't do former the guys. five most interesting personalities. What was the question? No, just like, like the best. Like I would, I would assume the question is like funniest. Just like best, not like the nicest guys. Like just the best personalities. Like they're they're funny. Like Evan Turner is a good example of just like a funny dude. Yeah, who would I, would, I would say Joel's up. Joel's up there for me. Joel Embiid. I would put um, I'll put Draymond in that category. I find him to be entertaining and interesting. Um, I put Jimmy up there as well. I'll throw Josh Hart in there just because I enjoy his company, and he's he is into the same things as me. So like, it's just, that's a very personal pick for me. I'm trying to think who else is like super interesting to me. I'll throw. I'll say Clay's. I'll put Clay. I'll pick two of two of Tyrese's. I I find Clay to just be everything he does to me is hilarious. And then there is that like oral history about Clay, where all his former teammates were telling random stories about him, and it's just like everything you could think about Clay is true. And it's just so and like you know he's, I, I didn't even I didn't even see I don't even know where he's at, but he's he's at some public venue with an Augusta bucket hat on and it gets posted yesterday on social. Like, it's just great. I love it. Tyrese, this is for you from Isan. What's your most, what was your most interesting rookie task? Hmm. I really didn't have that many. Uh, I actually got let off pretty easy. Uh, you know, as a lot of vet, a lot of my vets were telling me, but I'd probably say, uh, no, no, I don't have anything like super creative. I just, like Chick-fil-A every plane, like having to figure out that order. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, okay, get this. And I bring it and they're like, look, we don't got enough spicy chicken sandwiches. I'm like, all right, bro, I got you next flight. Next flight, I get more spicy chicken sandwiches. Now they're mad that I ain't get enough sauce. It's just, I'm never doing the right thing. So I would probably say Chick-fil-A. Chick -Chick um, we had to get a well, King's question in from Alejo. He said, what do you think about you playing with Davion and De'Aaron, that trio together. Yeah, no, I'm really interested uh, and really excited about it. Um, you know, I think at first the instant reaction by a lot of people was why would the Kings take another guard? I already have, you know, kind of two guards along with, you know, with Buddy and, and Terrence Davis and, you know, the, the guards that we have in our backcourt. Um, but I, I see a fit because they're bringing another guy who's, you know, very defensive minded. I think he was National Defensive Player of the Year last year. Uh, college basketball and, and you know I think if you just keep bringing in you know more guys that are about the right things want to win uh, proven winners and uh, you know talented guys that is, is going to help so I'm really excited about it uh, I think those, I mean guarding both of the both of them and playing alongside both of them you know in my limited time with Davion and runs and things you know they're obviously both they, they both got a real quick twitch and are really fast can get up and down and uh, you know, I like to run as well. So I definitely see a fit with those two. And I think 
you know, obviously it's situ- the NBA situational. You can run three guards against, you know, certain teams, other teams, it's, it might be a little difficult, but, uh, you know, I'm, ex- I'm really excited about it and uh, curious to see, uh, you know, how the year goes for us. All right. I got a question from Taiwan. Uh, from Michael in Taiwan, he said, what's the most surprising place in the world you would want to visit? I think that means like you can't pick like Italy. It can't be like some just nice. It has to be <laughs> oh, like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's got to be a random. This is like, similar just, to the last mailbag question we had about places in the U.S. you haven't been that you still want to go, which is, I, I think, have my a answer great for question. question. What's your answer? Ta- let Tommy I answer two. First. I want to go to Mongolia and I okay. want to go to. Um, uh, what's that part of what's the part of Russia that's near Alaska? Siberia. <laughs> I was like, I was like Siberia. <laughs> like, I want to go to Mongolia. I just want to go to Siberia for like three days just to check it out. <laughs> like, imagine if I was like I'm I in Siberia, was like right a very specific town, right there, the Bering Strait. I'm like, ah. God, I don't know the town's do a, name, oh, Tommy. Should we do an OM3 live You're talking about Siberia? that giant region called Siberia. Yeah, no, I got, I got yeah. you. Uh, Mongolia is a good one. I actually would love to um, take a bike and bike across the Mongolian Desert Highway. Not like a bicycle, but like a motorbike. I think that'd be amazing. My number one is is Patagonia. It's gonna be JJ's midlife crisis. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, <laughs> Mongolia on a motorbike. <laughs> You know, mid- midlife crises can come at any point in time, Tommy. It doesn't yeah, have to necessarily Tyrese, be in your in your mid forties. They can that, come in your late thirties too. That's a year and a half from now. <laughs> He's going to be in Mongolia. <laughs> right. <laughs> be hosting a travel show. As yeah, I we're going to be like bike across. How's the Wi Fi for the for the mailbag? <laughs> Tyrese is calling it from the All Star Game, and JJ is in Mongolia. <laughs> no, I would say number one on my list is, is Patagonia. I want to go to Patagonia. That's that's number one. That'd be cool. I don't think I've thought about this enough in my life uh i'd love to go to africa like uh let's just say uh, one of my best friends is from cairo egypt so i would i don't think that that's a very common answer for uh an overseas trip so i'd love to go to egypt and uh and uh, see things there that'd be dope but i don't i don't think I've, i gotta think about that more and uh get some places in mind yeah you need to think about that over the next because you're still you still haven't you haven't really traveled that much right uh, I went to. I played in Greece uh, for the under nineteen games, and then I like a month later I went to Italy and went to like Rome, Venice, and Florence. But that's all the overseas traveling I've done. So like to like to see some more stuff. All right, one more basketball question, Marshall Fresno. Terry, this is for you, but it, you this is probably just for you because JJ's. We've talked about this in the show already. Who do you think uh, take the Kings out of it? Who do you think won the off season? Like or not like of one, but like who, who? What moves were good? Wow, uh, you know I think the Bulls adding DeRozan was a good move. I don't think there's a lot of people that are a fan of it, but uh, Tommy is. I like it. Tommy is. Yeah, I, it keeps coming up on the podcast. You, I'm not. I'm not the one bringing it up. I'm just saying Tommy's a huge fan of it. I brought it up one fan? time, and it, and JJ keeps t- talking about me bringing it up. I did no. I didn't say I wasn't a fan. Tommy just said the Bulls are going to win the East, and I, I, I question that take is all. And maybe they will. The Bulls are going to. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? I love I think, Demar. I think uh, I love Demar. He's yeah, great. it's great. I, I, I like that. I like. Uh, I think Brooklyn's made some good moves. Uh, I like the addition of Javon Carter. I think that's like an underrated addition. But you know, you have three of the best scorers in the world, so you bring in a you know a guy to come off the bench and guard. I, I mean, I think that's a small move in the grand scale, but. You know, I, I think Brooklyn made some good moves. Uh, I actually like K-Lo to Miami. Uh, I think that they're going to, like, come playoff time uh, with K-Lo, you know, Jimmy, Bam. Uh, they got P.J. over there. Uh, I think they'll be able to switch a lot, one through five. And, uh, you know, I, I, and Duncan's over there as well. But, like, I, I think they'll be able to, to switch a lot, and I think that's going to help them defensively. I mean, I don't know how much that's going to help against, you know, Milwaukee and Brooklyn, but – I think those are some of my favorite moves. I'm not thinking of anything grand scale. You know, I like the I think the Lakers made some good moves. I think they're, I think, I mean, Russ is so strong and then put him with LeBron AD in a big and you bring some problems for a team that's trying to play a lot of guards. So I think there's been a lot of good moves, but I, I like the Bulls moves this offseason, honestly. Thank you, Terry. See? JJ's yeah. not a fan. JJ's not a fan, right? No, it's not that he's not a fan. This is what, t- I'm going to explain this very quickly. This is what it is. 
So you know how JJ's like, oh, I always dodge every question and I, I don't answer any questions. He, I forget, we, we had somebody else on. He asked me what I thought. I try, I said this to Duncan on the episode last week. I try not to give NBA hot takes on this show because generally I'm on a show with two NBA players and nobody cares what I think. So I try to stay away <laughs> from doing that. JJ sometimes will force me to give NBA hot takes and then I'll say it and then he'll make fun of the take <laughs> no matter what it is. <laughs> And then I'll be like, you don't know anything. And so I'm like, that's why I don't do it. This is, he just, he just Jedi mind tricks me into doing this. But now we have our, you know, our host of You've Got Mail backing my take up. So his beef is now with you. So I'm, I'm out of this. The Bulls made some great moves. All right, Tommy, let's, let's wrap <laughs> this mailbag episode Last up. Last question. All right. All right. Last question. This is a question that is very relevant to <laughs> JJ already. Terry, some curious, your thoughts. From Benjamin Kim, name a particular routine um, that has surprised you from a player in the league. Hmm. I would say, like for me, like. <laughs> do you know why, Tyrese? Do you know why this is relevant for JJ? Why? Why is this relevant? Because he's ex- ex- he's extreme. He has very specific <laughs> routines, like very, very, very specific. Yeah, and I. Get- They've written I, articles about it and stuff. Like, but I mean, it's the name of our company. <laughs> it's, I get why like certain guys have like a very specific routine. If you're wired a certain way and that gives you some level of comfort and peace of mind, like you do that. I also get why some guys are just fucking random in their routines. Like I get that too. It's like, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself. I was going to say, um, Dwight, when I was in Orlando, um, and I mean, he's still like shredded uh, and totally ripped, but like I never understood how he was that jacked because like we would have shoot around with Stan for like an hour and a half and then we would go and watch film for 30 minutes and the rookies would always say at the time, donuts was the thing. It wasn't Chick-fil-A or Chipotle on the flight. It was donuts. So you go to Krispy Kreme, you get like three, three boxes of donuts and you bring them in and Dwight would drink two cans of pepsi and like six glazed krispy kreme donuts at shoot around and i like every every shoot around you know walk through whatever film session and i was just like i was always very surprised by that is all i'm gonna say it didn't seem like the best thing to eat prior to a game i just that's that's all i'm gonna say uh, yeah, but the way he was blocking shots, <laughs> it didn't matter. It drink, didn't all the, matter. drink all the Pepsi you want. You I guess part of me that. was jealous. Part of me was jealous. You know, right? I uh, I don't know. I think I don't think I've been around that many. Uh, you know, I've only my sample size is you know much smaller than JJ's. Uh, that wasn't calling you old, but it was saying you've been around longer than me. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, but I would say uh, Harrison Barnes is very particular about his routine. He's very, goes around the same way. He eats the same thing before every game, chicken and rice uh, and vegetables and puts his headphones on and watches film. Uh, you know, I, I always see him doing the same things. He's got, he wears his quarter zip uh, throughout, throughout the arena. Uh, he makes sure that after every game he's getting treatment, always makes us late to the plane. Uh, I would say Harrison is very particular about what he does. I've never been around somebody who's, whose routine is, is that is that like to do, do everything the same way every time? He's a pro's pro, you know. Oh, he is. He take like I appreciate guys that take their craft seriously, and I that that's good to hear about Harrison. Yeah, it's a fact. All right, this is episode seventy four of the Old Man of the Three, but this is episode one of You've Got Mail with Tyrese and Tyrese. We appreciate the time. Always good to see you. I think we're seeing you soon in person, see you very right? Soon. Yes, very soon. All right. Two weeks. We'll see you soon. All right. right. Thank you. Yeah, yep.